Hey, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. For this week's micro lesson, I thought I would show you how to play the rhythm to a lesson that I did a few weeks ago, which was EP056. Um, I had a lot, of that in that lesson it was a lead lesson, I showed you how to play a lead over what I just played there, but um, a lot of people were requesting uh, that I do a micro lesson on how to play the rhythm. So I thought this would be a short and sweet little lesson, I'll show you how to do this, how to strum it, and, uh, and break it all down note for note. If you'd like to download the tablature for this and get the MP3 jam track, the same one I used in EP056, so that you can practice playing this along in tempo, you can get those by going to activemelody.com slash micro and doing a search for ML055. All right, so this song is in C minor, and a common scenario that happens in a minor key blues song for an intro and for a turnaround is to find the five chord, so in this case, a five chord would be a G, but then you go up a half step, so we'd be going to a G sharp. And then coming down to the G, so you're resolving to the five chord, and then resolving from the five chord to the one chord. It's like a double resolve thing. Um, and that happens in songs like The Thrill Is Gone, that one pops to mind, um, but in other songs, obviously. But that's how we're going to start this. The song is in 6-8 time, so we count it like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's what we're doing over that first chord, that G-sharp. It's actually a G-sharp 7 chord. Uh, so I'm just taking a G-sharp chord here and taking my pinky off. So you get that nice 7 sound, a little, a little bluesier if you take the pinky away. So we got... Two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six. We slide that down a half step to the G. One, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five. And then up to the C. Now that five, that's just a passing chord. I'm getting from the five chord to the one chord. And that chord is an A sharp. It's just an A sharp major. Um, and I just played it once. So to get from the G to the C, I went like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, two. Three, four, five, one. So right on the five, you're counting it out, and then up to the C. And you can play either C minor or C minor seven. The way that I'm tabbing it out and explaining it is all in C minor. So once we get to the C, I play this. And that's all kind of a turnaround. All of that was like an intro to lead us into the verse. So let me show you the rest of that. So from the C minor, um, I'm think of your major uh, bar chord, you just take your middle finger away. That's a C minor chord. The other way you might think of a minor chord up here where you're barring like this is to think your E minor chord. Just slide that E minor up and then use your finger as a capo. So we're playing a C minor chord. And the way that I'm picking it apart goes like this. So it's six, five, four. Those are the string numbers. These are just downstrokes of the right hand. Six, five, four, and then strum over and over again. And that's the rhythm. Now when you hit that little last strum there, let your left hand relax so that the strings don't ring out. Just like that. Okay, so that's the C part. Now we go to the four chord, which is a minor four. This is a minor one and a minor four. So the minor four would be an F minor. Now I'm playing the A minor chord shape with these three fingers. So think your A minor chord down in first position, slide it all the way up, keep that bar there as your capo on the eighth fret, and we're gonna play five, four, three, one and two. Five, four, three. Pretty cool little rhythm pattern because it's all downstrokes and it's fairly easy to do. And one other thing I like to do is after I play the strum, I keep my hand in motion and maybe even do two muted strums there or even just strum in the air, just to keep that rhythm going. I feel like I'm a drummer when I'm playing guitar like this. You have to have a, a snare drum going. So. There's your C minor, there's your F minor. And then for the turnaround for that five chord, I played. And uh, that's called a uh, G7 sharp nine. Um, it's kind of a weird sounding chord sounds almost unsettled, unsettling, um, but uh, some people refer to that as the Hendrix chord. Uh, he would use that in songs like uh, Purple Haze. And Let me show you how to play the chord. Um, if you think about, uh, all we're doing is we're playing a G7 chord, 
these these three fingers are making the D7 chord shape. So think of that chord shape down in first position, but slide mm -hmm. it up so that your middle finger and your ring finger are up here on the 10th fret. Uh, your middle finger is on the 10th fret, 5th string. And then you have that little shape. Now you have your pinky that you can put down on the 11th fret, 2nd string. Now really, the other way to think about this is just think of a G9 chord. Common blues chord, right? But there's your sharp 9, so that's why it's called G7 sharp 9. Just raising that 9. Okay, so that's how you make the chord. And uh, if you ever want to use this chord when you're playing, when you're playing a blues turnaround, it doesn't even have to be a minor key. It works in minor or major. It's a great chord to use for a turnaround. Uh, Robert Cray uses it often, Robin Ford. Um, but um, if you just connect it back to your chord shape, so you're, there's your one chord, there's your two, four chord, one chord. For your five chord, you just play what you would normally play, like a nine, but just sharp that. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to kind of spice things up when you're playing. And the way that I strum this sounds like this. So it's a series of downstrokes and muted downstrokes. It's all downstrokes with the right hand, but uh, the first two is just two downstrokes. Down, down, muted down, down, down. Another downstroke, another muted downstroke, and then another downstroke. Down, muted down. You get it, it'll be in the tablature, but it looks like this. And so it's just to create a little bit of a, a, almost like a hiccup in the timing to get us back to the, the normal cadence. And then we come to a little walk down part that goes. And then all that is, is it starts with a C minor chord. So I'm just barring, this time I'm switching instead of barring all six strings on the eighth fret, I'm barring just the first three strings and I have my ring finger on the 10th fret 4th string. And what's going to happen is you're going to keep these three strings down the whole time, but you're just going to do this little walk down with the, the lower note. It walks down like that. Look at that. Now I'm just going to come down here and play the 9th fret 4th string. Same rhythm pattern, by the way. It's just 4, 3, 2, and then a little brush on the 1 and 2 string. And then we're going to bar all four strings on the 8th fret with the index finger. And now look at this, I'm going to replace that bar with my ring finger, but it's still the same three strings, and my index finger comes down on the 7th fret now. So you can see all that's happening is this walk down. And that's used in songs like, uh, I mean, somebody pointed out the song Old Love by Eric Clapton. I even think of like uh, Stairway to Heaven. I mean, it's it's been used in lots of stuff. I know Paul McCartney uses it a lot in a lot of his stuff. So um, just a very common little walk down and it's very comfortable and easy to play. And then right after that, we go right back to that G7, G sharp seven, sorry. This is your turnaround, same as the intro. And then we're back and we just loop it from there. And that's what the whole rhythm track looks like. So practice uh, playing along with the jam track. That's probably the best way to get your timing down for this. Hope you've enjoyed this little micro lesson. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.